went on vacation with my Medicare eligible mother the other week. We get to the hotel room. I turn on the TV. She says, is football on every single day? Duh. For me, the press has buried the lead. You can see it here in the headline. Medicare would be expanded under $3.5 trillion budget resolution approved by the House. This came out a week ago. Literally, I was sending out last week's video when this crossed the headlines, so I didn't have time to include it. And there are first two bullet points, and the first bullet point will be handled in the next segment, which is that dental, vision, hearing would be included in original Medicare, which would provide welcome relief to many. But the reality is, it's the second bullet point, which is far more significant. Inside the Biden budget is that the Medicare eligibility age would decline from 65, where it stands today, down to 60. I can't overstate this. This would entirely change the retirement trajectory for millions of people. Now, the question is, is whether or not this thing gets passed, right? That is going to be the central controversy here. And the reality is that I'd probably not say that this is going to be likely. 50-50, probably not. Why would I say that? And it's very, very simple. The opponents are organized. The supporters are disorganized. We can see this all over the map, especially when it comes to health insurance markets, right? Which is, we've had all sorts of organized parties, AARP, creating intentional distortions to try to influence policymakers. They created a thing called no age tax. Don't get me started. I've already been on the soapbox telling people how distorted this actual slogan is, has been, and to what degree the ARP actually tried to twist mathematic probability facts upon which all health insurance prices are based. Anyway. I got to calm down. The issue here is that in the similar way that there are opponents to Medicare for all, expanding the Medicare eligibility pool from 65 to 60 would dramatically decrease, reduce the compensation, the payments made to doctors and hospitals. This is the issue. You can see from prior video, even last week's video, I went to talk about the fact that hospital prices were supposed to be transparent. And then you saw this New York Times article where all of the prices were all over the map, a thousand dollars difference for a simple MRI, which takes 20 seconds. From plan to plan, even at the same hospital, the price varied wildly. And the reason it varies wildly is because these are all negotiated contracts with substantial amounts of flexibility between among the parties, healthcare provider, hospital, insurance company. Under Medicare, that flexibility goes away. And the simple reason is that Medicare, the CMS, they set an indexed price list for every single healthcare procedure. So as a result, the amount of compensation that the doctor hospital would actually be paid if a huge number more of Medicare beneficiaries were all of a sudden at the flip of a switch Medicare eligible, it would decline overnight. In addition to that, the amount of margin that the health insurance companies would be able to make 
because of the fact that they're not that flexibility in pricing would also decline. Those three groups, organized. Absolutely organized. They were organized for Medicare for All. They'll be organized here to try to oppose this second bullet point from the article on your screen, which is to reduce the Medicare eligibility age from 65 to 60. On the other hand, the supporters are nowhere to be found. In other words, there are parties who should be wildly supportive of this. Who are you? Employers, absolutely, of every stripe, right? Because all of a sudden, the burden, the cost of the persons who are either active or retired would precipitously drop. Why? Because, for example, let's just take a small business. You're 62 and will full-time working. You can take your employer's provided plan. Maybe your employer kicks in 50%. You're still responsible for 50% of something that costs $1,000 a month. That's still $500 a month. Under Medicare, what would it be? It would be the Part B premium plus plus either Medicare Advantage, which could be zero, or Medigap. There are going to be ripple effects because Medigap pricing is going to change as a result if the eligibility age declined from 65 to 60. That yet is yet to be seen. Nevertheless, do I think it would be anywhere close to $1,000 a month? Certainly not. In which case, it would be even more logical for a 62-year-old person, even if even if they had access to group health insurance through their empl small employer to opt out. In fact, crazy people even have entire chapters of their book dedicated directly to this. I wonder who that could be. Huh. Anyway, <clears throat> large employer, same thing. So while less dramatic, right? Because large employers, generally speaking, pay for a much larger percentage of the entire health and insurance bill. It's the retirees, right? All of a sudden, the person who took early retirement are going to be able to get into Medicare early. And now, all of a sudden, their retiree benefits that the company, the ex-employer is responsible for would also decline immediately and dramatically. It's a little stunning to me, actually, that every city, state, school system, government-funded retirement benefits payer isn't out there on Capitol Hill right now insisting that this get passed. In fact, you can see in other locations something called the OPEB time bomb. And I've actually written on it. You can see other articles in GH2 Unfiltered, for example. And OPEB stands for Other Post-Retirement Employee Benefits. More than pension, it's retiree health care, creating a hole in fiscal budgets of every city, state, and government-funded employee benefits payer. Every single one. In addition to that, you also have the fact that all of the large companies that are having to pay for pension benefits or providing post-retiree employee benefits to those persons who took very early retirement prior to 65, those persons also would be less expensive if all of a sudden they were Medicare eligible. Anyway, we can go on for hours and hours, but that's the lay of the land, which is that this is huge because of the fact that people who are considering retirement have delayed doing so. And why? Because they wanted to keep their spouse 
or themselves covered by health insurance that they could not otherwise afford. For those persons in between 60 and 65, that is now entirely possible. The entire landscape would need to be completely rethought if the eligibility age declined. Last point, and it, as people would know that you know are on this channel, right? So I've written this book. There it is there on your screen, Maximize Your Medicare. Uh, you know, you can buy it on Amazon, et cetera, et cetera. And yeah, I know that pe some people are going to be, well, I don't read books. And some people say, well, I don't find a value. Why do I get a 15-minute book, $15 book, which is actually not $15. But why don't I just watch a 10-minute YouTube video? And the simple reason is the following, is that a single fact inside of Maximize Your Medicare is thousands of dollars. So let's just say, for example, that the probability of this actually being acted is only 40%. Okay, so now the question is, is the book worth it? 40% times $2,000 is still $500, right? The book is, what, $12.99 on Amazon? You see what I'm saying? And this actually feeds back through the rest of this channel which is people make very strange financial decisions. What I've just said is not complicated math, right? You could say there's 0% chance of this passing. It can't be zero. It can't, it's, it's not zero, right? It, otherwise, it wouldn't be part of this budget. So you need to think to yourself, or the way that I think about this, the way that I think about every financial matter is, okay, what's the probability of right and the probability of being wrong. The issue is here is that if the even if it's not 100% and it's never 100%, but let's say it's 40% versus 60%, that if it's 40% probable and your benefit that of stuff of information from the book to be gained is worth thousands of dollars and in some cases per year running for x years. $13, small price to pay. Versus the other side, 60% that it doesn't happen. And if that happens, what have you lost? You've lost zero. And this is the important way to think of other situations because it's not only that there's a chance that you're wrong, but there's a chance of you're right. And what would you get? in those situations. Sounds a lot like the way I'm showing you Medicare, Medicare Advantage, Medigap, different insurance policies, etc. You need to follow the cash flow and multiply by the probability of different scenarios occurring or not. So it's been widely reported dental, vision, hearing to be included in original Medicare as it is currently proposed under the budget, the Biden budget proposal. So, you know, I've got questions and you should as well. And let me give you some guide points here. So this graph that shows up on your screen is the cash flow payout to dental insurance, right? So in other words, this orange line, pumpkin line, right? You pay a premium and then you start getting benefits. You start getting benefits and there's all sorts of complication on under what situations you get those benefits. But ultimately, my job is to help evaluate that. The key thing here is you can see that the orange, the pumpkin line, orange line starts to increase, which means that you start to collect benefits. You don't have to pay as much. You don't pay the full price for certain dental services. However, once you receive up to the maximum benefit amount, then your benefits stop entirely. Most of the time, that limit is $1,000, $1,500 in every calendar year. 
people who have dental insurance, whether they be privately purchased, whether they came from their employer, whether it be Im embedded inside a Medicare Advantage plan, this is a known fact. So now let's just take a look and shut this off. And let's just take a look at Original Medicare. And um, Original Medicare, very, very different. And you can see it here on the screen. The fact of the matter is, is that when under Original Medicare, what happens is you pay a premium for the Part B, and then you pay the $203.5 deductible under Part B. From there, many people know this, Medicare pays 80% of the approved Medicare amount to charge. You're responsible for 20%. However, you see this line. This shape keeps going. There's no flattening out of the blue line. In other words, at very, very extremes, let's just make up an example. Let's say, for example, you have $2 billion of healthcare service cost. Okay. And after you get done paying the premium and then you've met the deductible and then it's $2 billion. So the government will pay 80%, $1.6 billion. You owe $400 million. You don't see the government under original Medicare capping the amount that they will pay, leaving you with the entirety of the rest of the bill they'll continue to pay 80% to infinity. That's why I made up this bogus $2 billion price tag. And now you can see the difference because dental insurance, they'll stop paying after you reach the maximum benefit amount. So what I'm going to be looking for is to see exactly what that language looks like because that will drive what I think about the existing proposals to include dental, vision, and hearing inside of Original Medicare. Thank you for watching the Much More Than Medicare broadcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to this channel if you've liked this video and be sure to hit the notification bell so you can be informed when new videos appear on the channel. Thanks.